Journal Connection. I'm your host, John Muir Laws. Today, we're going to be looking at the essential nature journaling skill of making a map. Maps are wonderful tools for including in your nature journal. When you make a map, it gets you to look at where things are in a really different way than you would if you were just to make a drawing of a plant over here, an animal over there, or even drawing a landscape. Traditionally, a map is an overhead view, but it can be done in a few other ways, as we will see. Maps are simplified drawings of a place, so we often use something called a key, where we make a little symbolic dictionary of the pictures which we're going to use. So if you have a hard time drawing a tree, you make a little mark and say, this is what I'm going to use to sort of represent a tree on my map. The key allows us to include a lot of information in a way that is very, very clear, very, very quickly. Today, I am at a drainage ditch near San Francisco airport. And I'm gonna be making a little, I'm gonna be making a map of this little section of the drainage ditch. I'm gonna start by drawing the general shape of the pond I'm then going to put in the locations of different kinds of plants I see around the edge. And then onto that, I'm going to put in where I see different kinds of animals. So if here are some of the tricks and strategies I use when making a map. I first think of my site as if I am looking straight down at it, as if I'm floating above it in the sky. Here I might be looking down on a little lake with an island. But I want people to look at this and say, that's water. How do they know it's water? They know it's water because I tell them. I can say that anything with these little waves in it is water. So this shape there is then water going around a little island. Just like that, I've communicated all that information. You can also use color in something like this. So I could put in a little bit of blue hatching across here. That makes it a little bit clearer that it's water. People often associate the color blue with water. I can do the same thing for all sorts of other features. Let's say there's a little forest nearby, in this case, an oak woodland. I might make a little diagram like this. Here is this symbol. means oak woodland. So here are the oaks. You could really use any kind of symbol you want. Sometimes it's fun to imagine it from the top. How would the forest look from the top? But sometimes even when people are making a top view map, what they'll do is they'll say, all right, you know, here is, they'll make a few little marks that look sort of as if you're looking at this forest from the side. So here is, it's going to add a few other little kind of fun features into this, a few little kind of hints of this, and then I'm going to put some trunks down here. So these are little oak trees. You're kind of looking at a sideways view at a little oak woodland. And again, I can add some color into that. Color makes any map a little bit more fun. There's no rule set or kind of guidebook to like, these are the symbols you have to use. If you look at um, formal maps that, um, that people use, you'll often sort of see the same set of symbols, but here you get to make up your own. Let's say there's a, a coniferous forest, a little group of pine trees over here. On this side of the lake. So I'm gonna say that this little symbol here means the pine trees. So I'm gonna draw some kind of jaggedy shape. 
you want to, to, to make a shape that's not going to take you forever to fill out. All right, so here this means pine forest. How do they know it's a pine forest? Because I'm going to write like this, pines. All right, so there's my little pine forest. You can also put in other features. Some things don't stick up. Like let's say there's a little marsh around this end. Well, here's my symbol for marsh. I'm gonna have a little box here. I'm gonna draw a few horizontal lines with looking like there's grasses sticking up. That's gonna be a marsh. So I can just put in, in this area, here's where the wet boggy marsh is. Now let's imagine there's a little creek that comes out this bottom corner here and it's going to go out, wind out through the marsh. How do I know it's a creek? Well, I could draw a little line in here and say that this is a creek. But for some features like where there's just one of them on the map, you can sometimes just write along it. People see something like this and they say like, oh, <laughs> that's the creek because it says creek right next to it. You can show trails. This trail is going around the creek over to where there's a little bridge and over to this little point here. So this little guide to the things that are in your map, we call this a key. So I'm going to write key. Here is my key. Now, some things on your map, you will only see kind of, they might move around. Let's say one day you come out here and you find that there are deer and they're grazing just out here. What you can do is you can write, this is where the deer deer grazing at dawn. And we'll write in the date, 7. And over here, that's where the owl nest is. So not everything has to be included in your key. You can have some things just be shown on, on your map. If you found the duck nest right here in the edge here, there's where the duck nest was. A couple other things that's useful to have on a map, something that shows you scale. Um, so scale means how big, so how far would you walk if you walked from here to here? You often can't be exact, but what uh, you'll see a lot of people do on the map, if they'll say like this, they'll just sort of draw in a bar. That's their little scale bar. And this is one kilometer. So this would be a half a kilometer right there. You could use miles. We often try to use the metric system when we can. If you get used to doing that, it'll become second nature. Another thing that's useful is to show which direction on your map, if you're able to figure it out, is north. So you can make your own little north arrow. This arrow direction right here is north. And um, on old maps, people would often get really fancy on the, the north arrow. And so if you want to have fun with that, you can and add whatever little features you want to your own north arrow. 
you can do that as well. But something that says like this direction right here is north, we have a key, we have a scale, we're using symbols to show what we have. Again, non-moving features, very useful to put in the key. And if you find little features that will change over time, you know, where the deer go, right? Where you saw the coyote. The coyote you saw walking across here into the oaks. Coyote, you also saw that on the same day, seven. You can include then a lot of information on a very quick little map. So your Nature Journal challenge for this week is to make your own map. You want to find a place where humans have not determined the locations where everything is. If you're doing this in a garden, well, things are where they are because somebody decided to plant them there. Out here, the environment and the plants got to make their own decisions. So that makes the patterns that emerge in a place like this a lot more interesting. So find yourself a place where you look around and say, there's, there's some interesting patterns when I'm kind of looking down on this place, some interesting patterns of either where the plants are, where the animals are, or where they, they both are, and perhaps the way they're interacting with each other. Start with the general shape of the place, and then you get to create your own key. You create your own key to the, the major features that you see around here. For in, in this place, my key is pretty simple. I've got one tree, a bunch of rushes along one side. I've got salt grass on another and another location where I'm going to show some pack, patches of pickleweed. It'll be a straightforward key. Um, you get to create your own key, your own symbols. So you get to pick your place. You get to pick which elements you're going to include in your map. Start with the basic shape. I find it's useful then to put in the plants, the things that don't move. And then I just sit around and I watch what are the animals doing here. Today, for, when I was looking at, at, at animals, over on this side, I saw a lot of um, bird activity. On this other side of the pond, where the, the, the plants were taller, the birds seemed to be avoiding that area. So that's kind of a, a, an interesting pattern. Another thing that was kind of going on in this place is that there are, from where you are, going across the pond. I'm standing on top of a culvert here. And ducks are coming underneath my culvert and heading straight out across the pond. And they're going to the culverts on the other side. So they're using this place as a little kind of a, a throughway. And I didn't know that they were doing that before. It's neat to sort of see what patterns you are experiencing. Then you can start to think about, hmm, I wonder why that is. So all the questioning that we did before comes right into this. So you want to practice asking questions. And again, when you're making maps, the where questions are going to be the ones that are probably going to be at the top of your mind. So where are the ducks? Ooh, egret coming in. Um, where are the ducks? Where are the birds? And notice that it landed on the side that I said all the birds were going to. This one just did that too. Hmm, I wonder if there could be a pattern there. So this is a very uh, useful strategy for starting to think geographically, thinking about space and place. When you make a map, you will see the environment in a different way. Have fun with this project. This is a skill, the more you get it, the better you get at it, you're gonna find you can really make maps quickly. And they're going to show you things about a place that you otherwise wouldn't have seen. A really useful tool to have in your nature journaling toolkit that you can pull out whenever you say, like, this is an interesting place, I'm seeing a pattern here. How do I document that? I know, I'll make a map. Until next time, this is your Nature Journal Connection. Doo -doo -doo.